here are the skills that you need, and we've gone over this, but just to reiterate, when you're in public, always be aware of opportunities. You might not, you might not look at every guy in the room, or not, you might not look at every person that walks in and say, okay, that's an opportunity. All right, there's another guy, that's an opportunity. You know, you're kind of doing this double rush thing, like, oh my God, should I, should I go in or should I not? <laughs> but make it a point to once a week, so you know what? I'm gonna practice just seizing the moment three times out of the week. Just see what happens. You're not gonna, no one's going to like, you know, have this big buzz and say, eh, eh, mom, try again. <laughs> you lose. Tell her what she's won. You know, not, they're not, nobody's ever gonna come out and do that if you, you know, if you crash and burn. But the thing is, is that you, you practice. That's all it is. Practice makes perfect. It's a cliche thing to say, but it does make, you know, it makes things easier for you. So then when you do find someone who's really attractive, you're like, you know what? I got this. I already did the five other guys this week. <laughs> <laughs> hey, boo. No. <laughs> but do you know what I mean? Practice makes perfect. Single study, being present. This is huge. Because a lot of women that I see in, so in singles events are not. It's sad to say. Sometimes I really want to walk up to them and say, stop. Put your drink down. Stop talking to another woman. There are men here. They may not be the man that you, you know, you're like, you know what, he's average looking. I, you know, I'm not really, he's not really my type. So what? Go to them anyway, because it's practice. That person might have a friend. You never know. But disengaging gracefully, like what we talked about, if this person is not, is really not fitting your requirements, okay? All right, well, I guess I, I think I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna go over here. But it's really great talking to you. Smile, be engaging. That's it. Doesn't have to be like, uh, no, mm -mm, no. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to be rude about it, but it's just a way to say, you know what? It's not for me. All right, being authentic and being the chooser. <coughs> and being the chooser again is not about waiting for a man to come up to you. It's not about saying, okay, well, this man approached me, and I'm a, he wants to take me out, so, all right. <laughs> and suddenly you find yourself in a relationship with a dude that you said, eh, all right. That is not being the chooser. Because you don't, you're literally just accepting what the universe has given you. Instead of you saying, you know what, I know what I want, I know what I need. And I'm gonna go look for it. And if I don't find it, and doesn't, someone doesn't approach me, that's okay. I'm gonna still keep looking, okay? Special interest settings, being reality-based and grounded. This is not the place to find a partner. When I say, when I say this, <coughs> don't use the special settings to start engaging in hookups. You're already there. Just focus on building connections because that connection is gonna to lead to some off, offline, hey, do you wanna grab a cup of coffee? Da, da, da. If it happens, great. If it doesn't happen, that's okay too. But at least you're in the company of people who are like-minded, okay? Natural versus forced evolution. Because the focus is not on dating, the transition from friendship to dating is more natural. This is great because a lot of people are very uncomfortable with singles events. Because it, it's like, I gotta do something. Um, I gotta like say something. Or I'm at this singles event and now I gotta like, you know, ask him out on a date. It, it's hard, you know, that's hard. So that's why going to these special interest meetings and being in communities is great because you're, you can build friendships there. And those friendships can lead to great connections, yes. Okay. If you go with some girlfriends, yes. uh, I would assume that men find it a little threatening and nervous when yeah. you're with your pack. Yes. So I assume before you come in, maybe you should have a game plan. Be like, you know what, we're gonna break. Yeah. And we're gonna regroup. <laughs> <laughs> like, you're laughing, but she's dead on. She's dead on. Uh -huh. But you know what, not in special interest, but public, public places and single settings, you're dead on. And then regroup in the bathroom and talk. Yes. <laughs> A man, three and under, three and under. If you are with like a squad, 
like you're five, six women deep, and you guys are all huddled, drinking on it, and sitting in a, in a round in a table, you will not be approached. You will not be approached unless that man has the cojones of life. <laughs> you will not be approached because like most men, well, they, like this man who decided to roll in a group of like 80 women. I mean, you're not, you're, and, and the thing is, is just because that man was not, was intimidated by coming up to a group of women doesn't mean he's not a real man. You know, a lot of people, a lot of women like to say, well, if he was a real man, he would have come up and he'd have taken care of business. No, because you wouldn't have done that. <laughs> so stop thinking that the man has to be this big macho guy in order to get your attention. He has to step over mountains just to get with you. No, because you're not that special. There's like 50 other, I promise you, there are 50 other women who will kindly take his hand because he gave them attention. And I don't mean it to sound harsh, but we have to begin to be open and recognizing what we're doing in our body language and what, what perceptions we are t we're putting out into the universe. So if you're with a pack of women, every once in a while I say, you know what, I'm gonna grab a drink. Go on to the bar by myself with your cute dress. <laughs> and then just get your drink and just look out to see who's there. Stay there by yourself for a little bit. Scary, See what's right? there. It's scary, but you know what? If you practice it enough, you'll get comfortable. You just have to practice. Okay? Patience, delay gratification. Time is on your side to get to know a potential date through interest-based interaction. This is still in special interest. This is, this is great because all that pressure is not there in special interest. It's about building friendships, about building connections, about you know seeing who has the same uh, value, values as you do. Okay, if you're at a ski club, you guys are always like creating events. Oh, let's go to Colorado. Let's go to Denver. Let's do this. Let's do that. Let's go to the Alps. You already have you know a, a core, and you'll get to talking about different things. And before you know it, you're friends, sharing emails, sharing like you know little group me chats and all that stuff. And you know. You start to begin to build friendships. The, the biggest thing here is building friendships and building connections because those, out of those connections, it's, you're gonna find your Mr. Right. Okay, next one. And then your community. Um, for intimacy to be sustainable and nourishing, it also requires trust, transparency, and rituals of connection. And this is great in communities because it's already there, just like with church. You already have a group for the most part, um, <laughs> for the most part, um, social interact or social um, um, activist groups or personal growth groups, everybody is on the same wavelength, and they may know somebody who's good for you. You trust those people in those communities, yes? Okay, so I know some guys in church that I want to date with you, mm -hmm. and you think they're not. Oh, they want you right now. How can you tell if they're a guy that wants you right now, right now? You know what I'm saying. When you're on a date, it will become evident. <coughs> okay? You might not, like, that's why I paused when I said church, because not everybody who goes to church is of the church. <laughs> yes. But I say this because, for the most part, people who consistently go to church and they're in ministries and they're, and they're they've got like this kind of family oriented vibe about them. Um, again, it's, you're not going to church to find a man contrary to what other people will tell you. <laughs> but because you are already there, you can trust them to say, you know what? I'm looking for this great guy who shares my same, you know, values and he loves God and he, you know, or you know, if you whatever whatever religion that you are, whatever, you know, spiritual based whatever you are, that this person is the same way, which means he has the same values as I do, which means he has the same most likely the same upbringing as I do. You can trust your community to tell them the truth, to say, I'm looking. Or if you know somebody, let me know so that they can help you with that, okay? But when you get to that part, that date, it doesn't matter if that person is from the church or from the street. You still gotta go through those same, you know, screening criteria to make sure that even though they may share the same values, they're not really for me because they're not really sharing, you know, 
all the things that I want, my life vision, what I want to do with my life, okay? Okay, recognizing those common skills, um, those supportability skills, just allowing people to support you, allowing people in, you know, sometimes saying, I'm single, but I want to be, I want somebody is scary because you don't want people to think that, you know, something's wrong with you. There's nothing wrong with you. There's nothing wrong with being single and wanting to share your life with somebody. But you do have to have a support group. You do have to have a support network, be it your friends, your family, um, you know, people in your organizations, people in your communities to say, you know what, you guys know that I'm looking for this type of person, not just a person, not just a man, not a single man, but this type of man. If you know somebody in your network, let me know. Yes, ma'am. Can you explain how you navigate if you are new to the city? Yeah. So, navigate what? Um, some of the things you're saying, you're saying you go out to certain places. If you're new to the city, you mm -hmm. don't know where to go or mm -hmm. you don't want to end up in the wrong place. Yeah. Or the wrong place so, or, or wrong mm -hmm. community or, or things like that. You just don't know. Yeah. So where would you go? So you let me ask you a question. If you were new, how would you find your, how would you find a church home? Um, I would probably, well, what I did when I first got here, I asked my pastor where I came from. Mm -hmm. He gave me several suggestions, and then I went online, mm -hmm. started watching people on YouTube and asking people for more. Mm -hmm. So that's how I did. Yeah. So you ask your network, mm -hmm. and you search. Correct. So if you wanted to find these places, you ask around to the people that you trust. Say, what's good here? Like, I'm new to the city, you know. What's a good place to, you know, have some good jazz or have some whatever, whatever you're, is interesting to you? What's a good place? Getting, getting, some, getting um, support from your network and then searching. I'm a big fan of Google. I'm always Googling. Meetups is good. I mean, you can, you can have a meetup for anything. There's a meetup for anything. So I would search. I would do Google search, um, meetup searching to see what, what type of groups are there out there that fit your lifestyle or fit the things that you enjoy. 